Today I have the great honor of chatting to Ari Anthe from NAM 2014. Welcome to the show. Hey. <laughs> Tell us about your association with Dean Markley strings and what makes these strings the choice for you. Uh, Dean Markley strings, they just hold their brightness. They haven't, I haven't actually broken that many strings on tour and I really dig in. You know, if you see me play, uh, you know, I, my fingers are bleeding. I don't hold back. I play with Alice Cooper, so most of the time. Uh, and, you know, we, we have different tunings and whatnot, and they just sound fat as. So, yes, love them. Your recent album, Heaven in This Hell, shows some great songwriting chops and displayed a fantastic collection of rock songs. Do you see this set of songs as being the core to your own live shows for years to come? Thank you. Appreciate that. Well, um, you know, this, this record I made was, like, the process was very free for me, like just going into a studio with Dave Stewart and having fun, getting amazing musicians together. It's a pretty eclectic sort of mix of tracks, um, you know, voodoo blues, rock, pop, country, a bit of country. Um, I had a lot of fun playing these songs live, yeah. This album was certainly more guitar heavy than your previous albums, would you say? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it has a lot of um, Delta blues sort of, uh, sort of vibes going on to it, but really heavy too because some of the riffs you know I double up with like a like an octave pedal going on with a fuzz box so it's kind of got that real beastly tone which I wanted. I can't think of another Australian artist who has taken on the world of rock like you have in the USA and worked with so many A-League stars while also having solo success in your own right. Congratulations on your amazing success so far. Thank you, thank you. Yeah it's been crazy, crazy ride. You have just teamed up with Richie Sambora and you are heading to Australia next month for Soundwave. What can we expect from you and Richie? It's going to be a complete guitar fest, you know. Richie just jams away. Like, we have so much fun. When we jammed out and met in Maui, it was like this instant thing. You got up on stage, he started playing, I started playing. It was like, you know, that was, the chemistry is there, you know. Sometimes you work with people and it's just like, okay, cool. And, and uh, so he invited me again to go and play the... Uh, was at um, this benefit in, in LA recently and I got up and, and sung, you know, Wanted, Dead or Alive and all these songs. So we're going to, we're going to jam out. I mean, it's, we're going to bring like almost like crossroads to, uh, to the sound wave in a way. It's going to be fun. Can't wait. You recently collaborated with Steve Tyler on your song Sexy Bazaar. How was that experience for you? It must have been a thrill to hear Steve Tyler's vocal towards on your song. Oh yeah, when he called me and he said he put down his vocals on the track, that was awesome. I mean, he sings his butt off and he's just, you know, 110% goes out there, just owns it. And he's been a good friend of Alice's like forever. So that's how I met him. And yeah, just really uh, grateful that he wanted to sing on the track. When you collaborate with other writers, are you starting with a blank page or do you have a core idea from the start? Well, it's funny. I have usually an idea of how I want the song to go. I come in with a riff or you know melody line or something. But then you have to sort of let go because when you're collaborating with someone, you know, letting them come in with their, you know, ideas of how the song should go. You have to be open to that and and not like oh I've got you know the whole song in my head how everything's going to be. And I love that process because. You know, when I work by myself, it's not as fun. I like collaborating, so, yeah. Your collaboration with Steve Vai on Highly Strung has now reached five million views on YouTube. If you had to label someone a modern day genius, would it be Steve? Oh, completely, he's amazing. He's like the Hendrix of our time. You know, he's like immensely talented. Like he can shred like there's no tomorrow and then play the most memorable melody, you know, which is kind of, it was pretty rare actually, because he those guitar players and they're technically amazing but then they can't slow down and, and, have, and, and write a song that's memorable. And Steve has both, and he's just like, he's from another planet, I'm convinced. He's like an uncle to me. But I watch him play, and I don't want to jam with him as much as I just want to watch him play, you know, because I'm learning. So forever be uh, schooled by him, for sure. He's awesome. And your friendship dates back to when you supported him in Adelaide, I believe. 14, yeah. 14, 15, my first support. Thank God I hadn't listened to a lot of his records at that time. I was just reading his, uh, he had this metaphor, uh, metaphysical sort of, um, uh, I think it's like a, uh, what do you call those, like columns in Guitar World or something I used to read. And then I just thought, well, this guy is really interesting and cool. And then I got the support. And I probably wouldn't have opened for him if I had seen him play, because he's scary in a great way, but yeah. When you were growing up, were there particular guitar songs or songs that were landmarks in your development? That once you mastered that lick, it would raise you to a higher level, like a Hendrix solo or a Van Halen lick? Yeah, Europa by Santana. 
And then um, I started getting into um, Jimi Hendrix, so like Purple Haze, all those tracks. And um, then started listening to a lot of Steve Vai after supporting him. And, um, you know, I, I studied classical for a bit too when I was about 10. And I, I don't know, I, I guess every song you learn, um, you have to sort of step away though from listening to people to find your own voice, which I find is very important. In your development period, how many hours per day would you play? Five to six. Yeah, maybe more. What do you miss the most about Australia when you are not there? Well, I miss my family, but they're here with me right now, so I'm happy. You know, I've had my sister, she's not here. And my chickens and my ducks are not here. But aside from that, it's great to, uh, you know, have them out for a bit. My dad hasn't ever been to NAM. This is his first NAM show. So he's uh, very excited. Oh yeah, he's a gear freak too, so this is perfect. Who are some of the other Australian guitar players who might have influenced you while you were growing up? Um, Tommy Emmanuel, love him, awesome. Um, who else is there? Oh uh, gosh, um, well obviously Keith Urban, he's an awesome player. And um, Carl said, yeah, he's great. Um, Angus Young, you know. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I'm. Mean, Tommy Emmanuel, when I was about 10 or 11, I used to go to his shows, my dad. He'd come out, just acoustic guitar, entertain your entire theatre of just playing by himself, like just ripping it up, percussive, everything. I mean, he's just one of those players you just think, okay, I can't do that. This is so entertaining.